I'm the tribe one. I come from I'm the hill tribe and I stay in a, a, a deep jungle. The area that we have, uh, it bring many people who bring the elephant into our area and they cut the big giant tree to be the lock, the locking. Hi, I'm Jay Rudiman and welcome to All About Change, a podcast showcasing individuals who leverage the hardships that have been thrown at them to better other people's lives. This is all wrong. I, I say um, put mental health first because yeah, if you don't... This generation of America has already had enough. I stand before you not as an expert, yes, but as a concerned yes, citizen. We This week on All About Change, we welcome Lech Chyler, an animal rights activist who's often been described as an elephant whisperer. For decades, Lech has worked with governments and local communities in her native Thailand, serving as a voice for this majestic animal. Throughout her life, Lech has seen these animals endure cruel and often abusive conditions. I heard all the time, you know, the screaming of elephant in the jungle. Her experiences shaped her love and compassion for elephants. I spoke with Lek about her work and the challenges she's faced along the way. Just a note, some of today's episode contains graphic descriptions of animal cruelty. Okay, so Lek Chyler, thank you so much for being my guest on All About Change. I'm really excited to speak to you and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Jay, to have me here in your program. And I understand right now you are on the border of Thailand and Cambodia. I I am here in the eastern of Thailand as along uh, Thailand and Cambodia border uh, where it's an elephant and human conflict. Uh, We have uh, in this area, they have about uh, about 600 elephants in this area. Every year, the number of the elephants get killed in this area, so... But that's why one of the reasons I am here today. And how many wild elephants are there in Southeast Asia? For Southeast Asia altogether, I, I mean all the Asian, uh, Asian elephant, wild elephant, is about 50,000 uh, left. And it's really risky and it's a critical on, on that because of the Asian elephant population is... Uh, they turn decline every year because of uh, the problem of uh, the land, the lost habitat. The people take uh, the land from them, especially for for their homeland. And the area that is uh, I am here today, I do right now. Now because I can't do alone, uh, I have to do that is to come to work with the local community, local government. Uh, speak for the people and bring the government from the center of Thailand to come and understand about what the people need here. Today is the people take the land from the elephant and they start to use the land for the plantation. So what we do right now that we have to bring the job to them and we have to start to bring more income to them. You know, Lek, I've heard you talk about the elephant as being the most majestic creature on the face of the planet. Can you talk about your first experience with an elephant and how you got into the job of being an activist in saving elephants? Okay. Uh, myself, I, I'm the tribe one. I come from I'm the hill tribe and I stay in a, a deep jungle and where the area uh, that is our village stay, we have many, like a big giant tree. So when we stay among the jungle and the, the area that we have, they cut the big giant tree to be the locking. And at that time, uh, I heard all the time, you know, the screaming of elephant in the jungle during the time they work. And we heard about the jade, we heard the angry of the man that is uh, yelling and shout. But in the same time, we heard elephant screaming. Uh, we're not allowed to go to the jungle to see what's happening over there. I keep asking my uh, father, my grandfather, what's going on in there, why elephants seem very angry. And then my grandfather just said, the people force elephants to pull the, pull the lock, pull the timber. So uh, that, that is, I can't imagine anything until 
uh, when I become a teenager, I work as a volunteer. I follow the missionary uh, into the jungle and to visit the tribal and also to help them to translate from the tribal language to the English. So when I was there and I heard the screaming exactly the same, that is the elephant work in, in uh, the village, in our village. So I asked the headman if they could show me uh, where, uh, where is the noise come from. So the headman of the village take me up to uh, the creek and then suddenly I see the bull elephant or really not looking well at all, skinny. The size of the timber is almost the same size of elephant. So he moved me up to stay in front of the elephant, which is I can see that every time when elephant start to pull the lock, I heard the screaming. And he tried very hard to try to pull that giant lock to, to the steep hill. Every five inches of to move the lock, he get a painful because three Mahout uh, who control him, one on the top of his uh, of that elephant neck, jab the knife into his head, the behind uh, in the neck, the one of uh, keepers start to jab with the spike in the back leg, and one in front slingshot his face over and over. So this elephant get very angry, and then he try very hard to get out of the pain, but. The more he pulled, the more they, they force him and, and abuse him. And when he stopped, he looked at me, and then he started to pull on his power again and screaming. And when I saw the man jab the knife on his head, I screaming myself because I, I wanted to stop it. During that time, I don't know between me or the elephant who's screaming the most because it's, I'm really upset to see that, and I keep screaming and then they removed me out from there. I remember that that eyes. That eyes and that, that noise touched my heart. I can see the eyes of angry, the eye of painful, hopeless, confused and everything, you know, come from that eye. You know, I came home with that noise and that eye follow me like a shadow. So I decided to work and bring the money to buy the medicine and I went back to the area again, I brought like a, a full rucksack. The medicine is not enough for the boy. I can see that his eye, his mouth and everything. Then the keeper said, more elephants sick in that village, more sick to the other village. They gave me a location and I walk deeper in the jungle. The more I walk into the jungle, the more I see the suffering. I witnessed all oh, elephants, sick elephant, and they told me when the elephant Falling down, die. So, like that's a very, that's a very traumatic story about your introduction to the suffering of elephants. I understand that your family was also involved with working with elephants. So, when you took the position of wanting to save elephants, what did that do to your relationship with your family? When I leave for my home, I'm the first woman in the village who come to a university because most of the tribal, they don't allow the women to, to go to school. So my mother asked me to be like a government official because the people in the village, they dream for the family to be the government official because it's, we get a lot of things also, you know, like a racist from the government. So I promised my mother that is when I graduate, I will work as maybe to be a nurse, to be a doctor, but I change my mind when I see the elephant. And I think that this is, I want to work for them and I want to voice for them. And I, I can't turn my back for them. My um, sister, brother, they do the elephant circus. Uh, I try already, I want them to change. They not agree and yes, uh, they don't want to talk to me. So I'm so sorry for the loss of the connection that you have had with your family, but you've saved hundreds and hundreds of elephants in your country. Can you tell us, in addition to logging, how else are elephants abused in your country? Many people come to Thailand and they want to have experience to 
right elephant. They want to buy the elephant painting. They want to you know to see elephant circus because it's in many country. Uh, you maybe can't find that, but you still can see many in Thailand. But what is behind the scene? First of all, they will take, they would separate the baby from the mother. This is this is the worst part. Elephants they socialize like a family. They stay as the herd. So when they take the mother elephant separate from the baby, the baby fear and confused. Many of them, when during the the training, they died during the training class. But no one speak about this. But before you know to train elephant to use for the locking, it might take a, a few command like a, to lift the leg to stop to to move forward. It's just maximum eight command, but to train elephant to work to serve with people, they then they non stop train. After they train the, the baby elephant, they make sure that the elephant afraid and obey the people. Because they they have to come to serve it to people to do whatever people want and and it's it's a lot a lot of things that people have no idea about that and as well in the tourist industry they bring so many baby elephants to come to uh, serve it people many people come uh, Southeast Asia and sometimes the keeper will tell to the tourist these elephants are the orphanage. But the fact is, they're not orphanage. And some tourists not even get no idea and not even question, but they enjoy to, you know, like a, to take a picture or selfie with the baby elephant. And when they start to show in the social media, more and more people want to do the same. What type of torture does an elephant have to endure in order to get to that condition? So it's, it's not easy at all. And also we talk about boho. When they start to train elephant, they have to not just leave really bow hook. They use, they use knife, they use nail, they use spike, they use rope, they use plenty for the first seven days. They tie elephant everywhere, and the more they fight, the more the the, the leg will cut deep, uh, cut deeper by by the rope. And then the baby elephant have to learn if they're screaming for the mother, they will pull with uh, some spike and also. They would jab the baby with the nail, nail ways they make very sharp. This is very sad. And I witnessed so many times and I have I have been, you know, some area when they when they train, they don't care because they outlaw. They allow me to see that and we can't do anything because we have no law. So I only take a picture of that because I want I want the world to see about that. But when I start to show that I can I get punish punishment by the authority and also I I, I get so plenty I get I get enough uh, bully by my by this as well I, when I start to speak out. So, what have you endured in terms of because uh, you're you're challenging a large part of the economy and a large part of society in Thailand that's using the elephant for different purposes? Have you been arrested? Have you been threatened? As an advocate who's standing up for the, you know, survival of the Asian elephant, what have you personally endured? One time, you know, I went to uh, transport the banana for elephant, and I get chased by the motorcycle. And first, we drive fast as we can because we don't know. And suddenly, that uh, man with on the motorcycle used the gun and knocked our window and tell us to stop. So when we stop and we ask, who are you? They said, they're police, but they have no uniform. So we can't stop the car in the middle of jungle. So we decided to drop the car and, and let them chase us until to the, to the BC street. So after that, they stop us and we allow, we allow them to, to talk to us. And I ask, what's going on here? And then they said, we want to search your car. And of course, you know, they said, get out of the car. And then the police call uh, my driver out and he said, come here. I want to charge you for driving with, uh, with no seat belt. And we said, we put a seat belt. And the police said, we didn't see you put a seat belt now, isn't it? So, and then they started to give us the bill. And then the police talked to my driver. 
tell to your boss, don't uh, try to be a big mouth to speak bad about country. And I know already, you know, uh, they get the order and I get, I get a lot, a lot of trouble for, for life, for the animal right in the country where we have very weak of animal law and no have animal right issues. Sometimes I feel that I speak like a, my language is like an alien language and it's, it's difficult to, to stand up and challenge, but I, I won't give up on that. I will speak until until that is from, uh, my voice can hear on behalf of the animals here. So, like, what do you think the role of circuses, elephants and circuses? Um, a lot of people attend circuses around the world and they see elephants and they're performing tricks. What is your attitude towards the use of elephants and circuses and, and what should people be doing in order to protect elephants? You know, in my opinion, the circus in century 21, they shouldn't have any more. This is very old fashioned. Our children shouldn't see this anymore. And the circus is always behind the scene. They toss elephant. No, no animal was will, will happy walk out of the cage and suddenly stand up at dancing and performing. And especially you can see that stand up and let the people let the people stand on the trunk, stand up with, with the leg. And this is unnatural for them. One elephant named Lucky, she's, she was the elephant uh, who, who did a circus since she one years old. Until she's 20 years old, both eyes blind from the light. And she, now, you know, she stayed with us. And we rescued her when she, uh, she was 20. Now she's uh, 35 like a 15 years already, she stay in the dark and people doesn't know what, when the people come and see, they, they may be enjoy, but who knows? And people think that is normal, but it's not normal at all. Elephants shouldn't, shouldn't be show a, anything like that. They, they should let them free, let them, let them enjoy with the river, let them enjoy with the mud bath and elephant, they are the social life. Uh, they stay as the herd. Let them be herd. Bring them to the family. They're not belonging to us. You are often called an elephant whisperer, and you can see the qualities of elephants. People often look at animals, and they don't think that they have feelings and uh, emotions. Can you tell me what it's like for you to connect with an elephant? Okay, Jay, anyone can be the elephant whisperer. The only thing that is, you know, when you see elephant as a life, you see elephant as the people, everyone can understand them. If they have, like a, if they stand on the, on the rock and under their feet have the, have the rock stuck in the feet, I know right away because they walk to me and they start to use the trunk to point. And then I would tell them, okay, lift, lift your feet. Then I see over there and then to, to treat them. Uh, sometimes I talk to the vet who stay at, uh, at our project when they want to draw the blood. An elephant doesn't want them. An elephant afraid of the vet. I said to them, look, start to come and speak. Speak very nice to them. It's, they're, they're like the children. So calm them down and let them know this is we will go to help. And somehow when the vet starts to uh, draw the blood, I have to be between their legs to comfort them like uh, my baby and to uh, let them know that the, everything will be okay. Between human and animal, we have only one wall. If we broken that wall, then we will, we will understand each other. It don't need a special skill, but need heart. To be that, and I, you know, I my husband, after he finished the work from me from Canada, and then he came stay with me now, and he spent a lot of time with Elephant, and now Elephant totally in love with him, and and they trust him and they love him. So I I think anyone anyone can communicate with Elephant if we really open our heart. So you started the Elephant Nature Park. 
Can you tell us a little bit about what it is and how many elephants you've been able to bring to the park to date? You know, the elephants in the park start from after I created it, and then I start to have a job and save money. And then I know that from the first impression I met that bull elephant, I not give up. So I saved the money. I went back, I want to rescue him. And at that time, I didn't have land. I didn't have, you know, I, I just I just want to bring him to stay behind of my, my backyard of the house. So I went back to the village. And then I find that it's, I went there too late because the, the bull passed away. So I not come back with empty hands. So I start to walk more and to search for the other elephant. And I found one old elephant and they told me she is 90 years old. At that time, I believed them because she's so, she's so skinny and look old. So I brought her and, and then I take her to stay with my friend project. And which is, I asked him if he could start an elephant sanctuary. So this man, he invest the money to put the elephant sanctuary. But uh, when he start the project and he can see that uh, his sanctuary next to the elephant riding camp, and he said he want to cross the sanctuary and he want to, uh, he want to open the elephant riding and he want to make money too. So I beg him, I said, well, what do you really want? He said he wants to start elephant show and circus. I said, no, 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 don't do it. So I asked the man, please allow me. I want to try. Uh, I said, okay, we can make the show, but not really a full show. So I start to take elephant to walk and start to explain to people about the elephant by talk about how how happy of elephant, where this elephant come from the biography of the elephant and start to tell the story. But for his competition, for his business and the other camp, they start to get conflict. The man get gunshot after that, you know, and after he get that injury, stay in the hospital and his family said, no, they don't want to do anymore. So I have to find the land to stay and but the land that we stay, right, I stay in uh, before I, I lease the land from the government. But the land we have right now, we have uh, donated money from uh, Bird One Roma, the man from Austin, Texas, who donated uh, the money to me to buy land. Bring, and we start Elephant Park with, with nine elephants from start uh, in 2003. That, uh, we start to the, the place we, we are staying now. So, like, how many elephants do you have currently in the Elephant Nature Park? We have at the moment 119. Next week will be 123 because we rescue four more. Wow. So you're doing, you're doing great work at saving elephants who have been injured and elephants in, in need. Um, I've seen a wonderful film um, that features you called Love and Bananas an elephant story. And there are many times when you're sitting directly underneath a three ton elephant. How are you able to have that connection with an elephant and not be afraid that the elephant is gonna crush you? I, I tell you, I, I feel safe to stay under the room more than I walk along the street side because it's, when I sit there, I feel peaceful. I feel, I feel protection. They will never do harm to me because it's, even they move their feet, they, they be careful every step. And sometimes during the midday, the lunch time, I would spend my time to, to sit there and they would, they would have a trunk and to touch me all the time. And like, a, okay, mommy, you are there. Are you still okay? And they would shake me all the time. And sometimes one elephant will come and grab me out from, uh, pull me out from, uh, under from the other one to there to be under them. And they they have behavior like a human. The jealousy sometimes when I stay with this and uh, they will pull me. Uh, they like uh, they fight to to help me under them and I, I I completely feel safe under them. It's amazing to see your connection to the elephants. Um Lek, how do you think that you've changed attitudes in your country towards elephants based on your activism? If I talk like a 15 years ago, it's very difficult. Uh, when I start to, I start to invite many of the camp 
owner. We have about 300 camp before COVID. And many people that is, they are really enjoy to make money from elephant riding and circus because we have a lot of Chinese tourists to come sometime like a million, million people a year to come to use elephant service. And when I start to talk to them, they laugh. And I invite so many people to, uh, to change their way from riding and elephant circus to be the ethical program or to do more human uh, business. And many of them just said, no, they don't, they don't care for that because they can make money from riding a circus. They, they, they feel secure on that. So it's, it's very difficult when we start to talk to them and they don't change. So we, we create a volunteer program and we have the people who come from around the world to work with us and I educate the people from that point. And from these people, they become our elephant ambassador. When they know better, they do better. So the inspiration from what they have learned from Elephant Nature Park drive these people to go around the world, uh, to go back to their home. They start to help us to educate. <clears throat> they start to campaign to the, uh, like uh, the guidebook. They start to campaign the travel agency. So when the, when the people start to get educated and they start to show about uh, the training class, so many travel agencies start to announce that they don't support the elephant show circus. And you know, when the market outside start to say no, then the business came in Thailand. And if you come to Thailand right now, uh, compared to 15 years ago, you will see the poster everywhere. They call about elephant sanctuary, elephant retirement, elephant conservation, no shade, no hook, no show, no riding. And most business start to start to advertising because it's from the work we have, we have you know, educate for over uh, over decades is have changed the market, and and especially I have the hope of uh, the young generation that who can help us to voice for the elephant and the attitude of the people now start to change. Well, Lek, that's a huge accomplishment. Um, just to to end with, for our listeners, what can they do to help? How th- how can they get involved to save Asian elephants? I always tell people, education is a big impact. Big, uh, we can bring the people if they, if they come to ride the elephant or they have to go and see the animal show because the people didn't know. But if the people know, they won't do it. So I think we have to, to educate the other who, who didn't know that. And now everyone that can, can help us to voice for the elephant. And we have, the most powerful tool in our hand is the social media. And animals can have that, so we can create that to help to educate people. Share through your Facebook, your Twitter, uh, Instagram, and, and then educate the others. And for, you know, for social media, is a, a really can help us for a big change and can speak a thousand words for the animals. And as well, that is so many people who, who doesn't know they lost the way. We cannot insult them. We have to gentle and give them uh, the point and guide them to the right way. And I would like to also to talk to many animal rights. So animal rights people always talk that is they love animal, but they hate people. And I think that is maybe we have to change our way to work. We cannot we cannot use word hate because it's, if we love animals, we have to work with people as well. We have to care to people who doesn't know. And we have to work with, work with love and care and bring them to understand us. And we cannot push them away. And this is the only way that we can, we can help the animals uh, and speak to them when they don't know that. Uh, I, I think this is the only best way we can do right now. Well, Lek, thank you so much for being my guest on All About Change. I really admire your dedication and, and the devotion that you've given your whole life to saving the Asian 
elephant in improving our environment. So thank you so much. And I wish that you will go from strength to strength. Thank you so much. Au revoir, but not goodbye. When Lex speaks, you can hear so many things in her voice. She can be somber, but also hopeful and determined. Above all, you can sense how much respect and reverence she has for elephants. These animals have long been subjected to cruelty and exploitation, and not just in Thailand. How can we change that? Tweet us at Jay Ruderman and give us your take. Thank you for joining us today. Check back here in two weeks as I sit down with Jean Wiener, the environmental activist restoring coastlines in Haiti. Today's episode was produced by Kim Wong with story editing by Yochai Metal and Mijon Zulu. To check out more episodes or learn more about the show, you can visit our website, allaboutchangepodcast.com. If you enjoy our show, please help us spread the word. Tell a friend or family member or leave us a review on your favorite podcasting app. We would really appreciate it. All About Change is produced by the Ruderman Family Foundation. Special thanks to our production team at Pod People. David Zwick, Grace Pina, Morgan Foos, Brian Rivers, and Amy Machado. That's all for now. I'm Jay Ruderman, and we'll see you next time on All About Change. Au revoir, but not good.